Our scripture reading for today is Romans 5, verses 1 through 8. And if you'd like to follow along in your pew Bible, it can be found on page 155. Listen for the word of God. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Will you all pray with me? Lord God, by your spirit, teach us to obey your voice and keep your covenant so that we may be a kingdom of your holy people. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to let you in on not so much of a secret, but uh, something about me personally. Um, And that's that I love personality type testing. Not horoscopes so much, but those personality type tests. Uh, In high school, we took the Myers-Briggs type indicator test. I think a lot of people have taken those. Um, And those indicate psychological preferences in how people perceive the world around them and how we make decisions. So are you an extrovert or are you an introvert? Are you a thinking person or are you a feeling person? I like seeing how I'm different from people in some ways and similar to others in how we make decisions and our personality styles. And then in seminary, because we have to take these quizzes more, psychological testing, I became more interested in something called the Enneagram, which is a model based on nine interconnected personality types that describe how we perceive and react in the world and what drives us in our lives. They are the reformer, the helper, the achiever, the individualist, the investigator, the loyalist, and the enthusiast, the challenger, and the peacemaker. Now, I want to be clear that no one personality type is better or worse than the others. They only reflect how we react to different levels of stress or satisfaction in our lives. So the Enneagram personality type indicators provide insights into our behaviors, both when we are in balance and when we are out of balance, or when we feel in balance, I should say, or feel out of balance. So I will give you an example. Uh, I generally test as a type two, which is sometimes labeled as the helper or the giver. And in ministry settings, you find a lot of people who are uh, type twos or type nines, and type nines are generally labeled the peacemakers. And each personality type holds a basic belief about their role in the world. So in balance, helpers can be friendly and open, they can be expressive, uh, and they can be supportive of the people around them. They are helpers. And out of balance, they have a need to be needed or to help. And that becomes so overpowering when twos are out of balance that we, or I, become prideful, intrusive, and demanding. Now, there is no need for confirmation from any friends or family on that, by the way. 
This comes out of a core perception that twos, or helpers, believe that they must be helpful in order to deserve love and to have value in the world. In contrast, type nines, or mediators, the peacemakers, they believe that in order to be loved and to be valued, they must create and maintain harmony in the world around them. So they have to be easygoing. They have to be the peacemakers in every situation for them to have that value. All of the types have this principal belief of what makes them lovable, what makes them valuable, and what gives them worth in the world. And I'm willing to guess that within this sanctuary today, we have all nine types represented through one of you in some way. Now, in balance, when we are in balance, we create the helpers of the world, the peacemakers of the world, the artists, the activists, the inventors and the innovators, the protectors, those who are filled with joy, the joy makers, and those who look for and seek out the truth and justice in the world. That's when we're in balance. But when we're out of balance, they show our human vulnerabilities to doubt our own worth. And when we doubt our own worth, we can feel the need to overcorrect and to justify ourselves. We try to justify ourselves, and we try to justify ourselves to God. And we create a veil of value that we don't feel within ourselves, so we, as they say, fake it till you make it. But it's those projections of self-justification that become our own isolating prisons. They are prisons of our own making. So for those of you who have Facebook, I'm going to use Facebook as an example. Studies show that people who spend too much time on Facebook, myself included, uh, can have an altered perception of their own lives because of the projections of happiness and success and the personal fulfillment that they see posted by others. So we present a facade for ourselves of, perfe of perfection, but we never quite feel like we measure up to what we're seeing online in the lives of others. And so this cycle continues. I post all my happy things, I see all your happy things, and we both feel like we're not quite measuring up. So then what's the solution? Should we all just get off Facebook? We should do that, right? No. Facebook is how I know that it's your birthday. It's the only way I know. And some of my friends live really far away, and they have these really funny kids, and I like to see those pictures. So I'm not giving up Facebook, and you don't have to either. But then, so what is the solution if we don't give up Facebook? And what's the impact of this larger issue that's presented in this example of social media. I think that it's we seem to hide our individual and sometimes collective struggles from the world, not just online, but everywhere, and even in this building. I will be the first to admit that when I come to church, I don't always bring the very best version of myself, because I can't. But I can bring the very best veneer of myself. And over time, that impacts faith. I have heard this joke so many times, and I try to laugh a little bit, but generally it just hurts my heart. So when we walk in with people who are coming into, people who are anxious about Christianity, when they enter a church, they say, oh, I hope I don't burst into flames. You guys have heard that, right? I hear that a lot. Like somehow crossing the threshold of a sanctuary requires perfect behavior. Or that there are requirements for justification of our presence before God. Requirements that are anything to be other than who we are. Is it not intimidating enough to show up to worship after a hard week of feeling like you made every wrong move, questioning every interaction with a friend, and just feeling like a life mess. And now, there's this feeling, this added guilt of imposter syndrome. Not just do we have to be perfect, we have to be 
presented to be perfect to the others around us. And I think that's what we hear in that joke of, I hope I don't burst into flames. Are they just saying, I hope I'm enough, I don't feel like I am. We as members of the church, we have got to stop projecting this model of self-justification, that we are goodness of our own making, and we are perfection in every season. The veneer that says, yes, I have it together 100% of the time, no problem. And we have to get rid of it because it's hurtful. It's hurtful to ourselves, and it's hurtful to others, and it's not an accurate description of the message of Christians. If people feel like they can't come to church because they don't have it all together, that they are at risk just walking in the door, then we are not making clear the good news of the gospel. And we're not being honest about what brings us in the door week after week. That we know we are loved, not because we measure up to some holy standard, but because we never can. And we know that, and we still know that we are wholly loved. Not in our strength, but in our weakness. The scripture today said, not in our strength, but in our weakness. And we can find peace outside of any search for earning of our value before God, justified by faith and by faith alone. The scripture today also describes boasting and suffering. And it's hard to imagine how that idea of being almost arrogant about our miseries doesn't fall into the category of being self-righteous about our suffering or even playing the victim, which I love to do. But when it's set in the contrast of justification by faith, it's not about boasting in our suffering, but revealing our struggles, our daily real struggles before the community and still letting that be a way of glorifying God bringing our weakness out of a hidden darkness and into the light and recognizing that consequently we are accepted for who we are by God, suffering and all. I don't have it all together and I never will. I guarantee you that I will always go back to that dark place, to the out of balance part of my personality that believes my actions and identities is directly linked to my value. That I am worthy by what I do, not just who I am. But that is not scriptural. And that's why I need you, and we all need each other, to show our in and our out of balance selves, and to help restore our community to a balance as a whole. Those nine personality types are interconnected for a reason, because they are interdependent of each other. And for Christians, they are a representation of the body of Christ. Many gifts, one body. To remind one another that we are not in competition with each other, and we are not here to see who does or doesn't measure up. Not in this place, not in our faith, and not with our God. In recognizing our places of hurt and suffering, where we aren't able to pull it all together, we lift up that it's not our personal successes that allow God to love us. And that is the great and the good news. So no longer do I need to spend time fretting about whether or not I am worthy of love whether I have earned my grace, or whether who I am is enough before God. I don't need to spend any more time on that, and neither do you, because for God, you and I are always enough, and that is everything. Instead, we can spend that time assuring others of the same. We can take all of that time and energy we spend hiding our struggles, 
trying to prove our worth to one another and to show how it produces endurance, character, and hope in the world in a good way. This is the peace in Christ that brings us back into balance, that frees up that time we spend hiding our brokenness and makes us light for others in the time of their brokenness. And for that, we can all say thanks be to God. To the one who by the power at work within us is able to do far more than we could ever ask or imagine. To God be the glory in the church and to Jesus Christ in all generations, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>